So, as you can see, that is Brian Callen sitting down on the Candice Owens show. Um, it, it seems like the it seems like the conventional approach. Uh, were which, you as a comedian? It seems like the way to go for anyone that's cancelled, right? Whenever you get cancelled, the first place they go are on these sort of like right wing, um, that's alt right uh, talk show platforms, I guess, which makes sense because they seem to be the only places where you can kind of speak out against uh, cancel culture and all this sort of malarkey and give you an opportunity to say your piece, la di da di da da da. But optics wise, it does look a bit strange when the person who you would think is more left leaning gets themselves into a bit of trouble and in the first place they go and run is to the conservatives because they feel like they're going to get a fairer crack of the whip right it does just come across a bit strange now if you're brian callen and you really believe that you're innocent and you did nothing wrong it makes complete sense isn't it because at, what's at stake here is your career that you've kind of spent what more than two decades building right you've kind of been grafting on the scene you were hot shit for the moment and then suddenly it all got taken away due to these allegations that um transpired from over what 21 years ago what was it what's it yeah, tw 21 years ago so if that's the case you can definitely understand why somebody like a Callum would be uh doing everything in his power to make sure that he gets his job back in some way shape or form it's just optics it just looks a bit odd in it but you know again i understand where it comes from he's got his you know he's got his crew cut uh, he's cut his hair nice and short. He's got a bit of makeup on. He's wearing his uh, news broadcaster blazer. For some reason, he decided to wear white socks with black boots, it appears like, right? Am I, am I mistaken here or am I bugging out? But they do look like white socks, aren't they? That's a big faux pas, white socks with, bl with black boots. But hey, what can you do? So let's hear what he has to say regarding his uh, rape allegations and whether or not they're true or not. Uh, where you as a comedian had an allegation from 21 years ago yeah. and this happened this is happening in the present right now yes it 21 is. years ago mm -hmm. and a young woman uh says something happened 21 years ago well, not young so I mean, not yeah now was yeah. young i guess sure. 21 years sure. ago and then now <laughs> i made an allegation against you and wham that's interesting that's the point that he kind of pulls up on in it she's not young it's like mm. It doesn't matter if she's old or young, mate. Keep your being accused of rape, you know what I mean? Uh, you got canceled. Yes. Everything goes away. Everything goes away. Yeah. Um, overnight, an allegation. Everything, yeah. Ha was it proved? Was there? No. No, no. no. and, and the, the problem is that whenever something like that happens and it's 21 years old, you the only thing you can do, really, is go, no, I didn't. I, what else are you going to do? No, I didn't. And, and what's interesting is that most people say, you know, you just got to the only way to fight this sometimes they say is to just disappear. No, no, I won't. I won't. I know who I am. The people that know me know who I am. And so sometimes you define yourself along the lines of what, what you're willing. You define yourself based on what you're willing to fight for. Now, the issue I guess that he has here is that if you remember the allegations specifically, like one could argue that maybe the rape allegation is somewhat you know there's it's dubious you know you can say what you like um there because there was an ex-girlfriend uh she might have felt like she was taken advantage of in some way shape or form but maybe you know again it can be a bit it's a bit murky that one the issue that he has isn't that allegation it's the one concerning the girl in the shopping center right that was the one that was weird and it sounded like something that he could have done right where he was like getting changed in a changing room flirting around with the shop assistant and then he decided to pin up against the wall and try and make out with her right now who knows there's probably still more to the story he could argue that she was acting or giving the impression that she was down and then suddenly changed her mind last minute and got uncomfortable whatever but that was the story that kind of from my point of view when i read that i was like oh that sounds like him that sounds like the story that he would have said on the podcast as a joke that was the issue with it because the rape one again it could be far-fetched it could be a scorned ex-lover whatever it is but the other stories were probably as bad if not worse than the actual quote-unquote rape allegation that was put out about him but hey maybe that's just me and by the way die for sometimes on that hill right. you know i'm sorry to be dramatic but that's who are you in in in, in moments of chaos 
And um, and unfortunately, sometimes you just there's nothing you can do. So I have a That's question. If somebody and I'm just trying to figure this out of somebody who works with a bunch of other companies, but if somebody made an allegation against me. You know, I'm 31. 21 years ago would be weird. Candice mm. uh, Owens, when she was 11 years she was old. A, she was a child, but right. precocious. <laughs> At least is in a good mood about it. That's one thing, isn't it? Because I don't know if that was if that was I and the career that because you know you have to you have to remember too. This is Brian Cannon. This isn't you know some A list actor. He's had to work really hard to kind of get the position that he had prior to the cancellation. So for it to be suddenly taken away from you based on the allegation that you think to be false, I'd be a lot more, I wouldn't say angry, but I'd, I wouldn't be as jovial as he is now at the moment. This is probably just a coping mechanism and he's an actor, so maybe he's got his screen face on. But this wouldn't be a time for me to like be laughing and joking. I'd be trying to stress as sympathetic, sympathetically, sympathetically as I could my point and also put it out there that this is not something that you could ever do. And obviously, be sympathetic to the you know to the accusers in some respects, but I'll just be I'd be a lot more serious about it. This wouldn't be a time to laugh and joke. But again, I understand it's a podcast. It's a five minute excerpt of a probably an hour long conversation. You know, probably things relax after a period of time. You get comfortable. You feel safe around people. Da 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 da. But this wouldn't be a time for me to be like you know laughing and kikiing personally. She was an <laughs> outrageous child, I tell you. <laughs> But let's say they did this allegation against me and I get something and it's 21 years ago and suddenly prayer you just the next day they hear the allegation like Candace you're done yeah. what is the retribution against companies with I mean isn't due process like a part of the American system like is there any retribution when you're get when if you get dropped by sponsors dropped by your show based on allegations I've seen this happen forgetting forget the me too sexual assault stuff I've seen this happen somebody says she was mean to me and she's a racist, and I've seen people lose all their sponsorships. Or the, t- the only way that you're going to ever do it, and again, I, I think sometimes I understand this talking point about due process on the right, but you have to kind of operate in the world as is and not as you would hope it to be. Unfortunately, we're living in a time, I think it will change us, right? There will come a time in point, there will come a time uh, when due process is the key, when you're innocent until proven guilty and all that malarkey, that will happen. But for now, unfortunately, especially when it comes to allegation of including women, when it comes to assault and abuse and all those kind of things, the burden of truth is always placed on the woman and the guy has to kind of explain himself and maybe dismiss those allegations in some way, shape or form. We've seen it done before once, obviously, maybe a couple of times, most notably with Justin Bieber, right? He got accused by a few girls online and he was able, maybe because of his age and the time that he came up, he was able to get loads of receipts and documents and clips and stuff to basically disprove the entire story. And it basically went away overnight. I still think he was suing them or something over that. Yeah, something was happening. But if you're Brian Kellen and you made it when you were, or you came into industry in the 80s, it's very difficult to get any kind of proof, demonstrable proof that would back up your story. So if anything, it turns out being your word against theirs. When that's the case... You have to be very careful about how you approach things. So him going around and suing the husband of the ex-accuser, putting out a statement and saying it's cancel culture, all these little fumbles didn't help his case. I think it's admirable that he came out and spoke, right? And basically was saying, hey, I didn't do this and trying to buck the trend of just disappearing and going away. But the way he did approach it, especially in the he said, she said case, he didn't really deal with it in a sensitive manner. And it just seemed like he was not taking that seriously as probably he should have. Maybe he has realized now because, you know, essentially his whole career has been taken away from him. Even his podcast that he built from the ground up with Brendan Shaw, he sort of got booted off that. Um, Maybe this is a realization that he needs. But I think as a lesson to most people going forward, if you don't have the evidence to kind of clear your name, you have to pick your words very, very wisely. Choose them very, very wisely. You have to make sure you you know the right platform that you go on wherever it may be but you can't just be going out there putting out statements and saying you're going to say the truth and then being muzzled and then suddenly turning up somewhere else and doing podcasts behind the paywall it just comes across really mad
the toxic work he they, they, they created a toxic work environment yes with no proof even though it's the set of Ellen you work in a real toxic environment please like right. a crab boat or in a coal mine or right. in a chemical factory or a slaughterhouse <laughs> would you I mean get a little perspective I'm sure it wasn't that great I'm sure that there was but my god have we lost perspective we've lost the plot yeah but yeah uh, yes the, the 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 truth is what happens with all your sponsors and what happens with anybody who pays your bills is it's it's just too risky, and they just do this. They go, ah, we know, we 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 believe, we're with you, but unfortunately, we just we, we they, they, you know, there are other we can do. We can just pivot over here. We just have to for now. Right. That's what happens. Yeah, that's so sad. And there's nothing you can say. You 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 understand it because right. because. But the interesting part about that, which I get, sponsors is one thing. The concerning part about it would be, if you're in that circle of people. And one of your friends happens to be Joe Rogan, right? One of the biggest podcasts in the world. You know, he's always kind of rallying and talking about cancel culture and SJWs and stuff. You'd imagine that would be maybe the first place, the first um, safe space you could go to to say your piece and to fight your corner on one of the biggest platforms on the world. But maybe it was just poor timing. The f you know, during these allegations first came about, that might have been the same time Rogan was kind of negotiating or announcing his Spotify deal. So at the very moment where he basically needed his friend the most, he probably couldn't go on there because of political things behind the scene. But that's the most concerning part. Of it. And then again, on top of that, forget that thing. Maybe he didn't want to fumble the bag, but I don't think Rogan's mentioned Callan's name once, maybe a couple of times in passing, but there's been no real backing of him from his actual friends in comedy coming out and saying, we don't believe the story. No one's gone out of their way to do it. So again, the sponsorship is one thing. The more concerning thing for him would be that his own friends in the industry have uh, acted like sponsors and refused to get involved or to co-sign him or to give him any kind of support publicly in order for people to believe his story. Because at the moment, like it is, like I said, it's a he, she said, she said, it's your word against hers because it's just too, you know, the allegations are too far gone for there to be any demonstrable proof. So if, if ever there's an opportunity and a time for you to call on your friends, influential ones with resources and whatever it may be it'd be now but again he's all alone talking to Candace Owens his social media is loud right. and even it again it's an inflexible minority yeah. well I have to say oh, credit to Prager you because they have gone through about 20 Candace scandals that things that never happened yeah. and they've always held me down they've been like this is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard like I well, mean you're important yeah <laughs> so, they, they, so yeah. And it takes but it, because Prager you has a spine you know what I mean they have a spine and they're not going to sit here and let T the Twitterverse dictate yeah. who they work with. Something crazy. Candace is a white supremacist is trending. How weird if like Dennis Prager was My like, favorite thing. hey, Candace, I heard that. Uh, we know you're not really a white supremacist. We got to let you go. We gotta, <laughs> it's just not good right now. Right. You know? Well, some people are kind of untouchable. Right. And I feel that way about you. Yeah, because I'm black. Yeah, um, although you still get your share of criticism. Yeah, although you're I do. still lambasted for being what you're not. But it's, and again, it that's because the they, don't have, they don't have an effective argument right. against you. It doesn't you. land the same when they're doing it against a black woman. Yeah. But you're not a black woman. No. Uh, or Damn do you it. identify as? The night I, is still young. I didn't mean to. Yeah. I, do, I do identify as a black woman, but I'm not one. Not one. You're not one. <laughs> you self So either he's telling the truth and he didn't do it, or he's just... A complete sociopath or psychopath, right? Because no one else would be this jovial and this chill about the situation that they're going through, especially when you think about what's at stake. Surely, that's the only conclusion I can come away with this from. Wait a minute. Well. Yeah, now I'm confused. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I mean, I'm in transition. <laughs> So you have that going on. Why my finger? There's no. But, why did I, that's not a good impression of a black woman. My finger not, is up like that. No, that's no, ridiculous. No, no, no. You look I like apologize. a New York elitist. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah. <laughs> my true colors. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but because you're a white man, hmm. sort of this allegation, they, they so they just sort of say, "Okay, bye. I'm sorry. We know. We know. But we have to go." Sort of a thing. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I knew right away. There's nothing I, you can do I, about I, it. There's nothing you can do. There just isn't. And and um, I think. Um, there, there's a the, the only thing you can kind of do is keep moving forward, try to try to pivot, try to come up with a. Mm. You just have to just keep. I don't know about that one, mate. Again, like I said, I, I think there's loads of things that he's done himself to really get himself in a situation. Um, the statements when the story broke didn't help. The trying to do a podcast and calling it something else didn't help. Then moving by the payhole didn't help. Calling it counterculture didn't help. It's just loads of missteps. Keep 
creating and thinking and um, do do what you did to get yourself to the dance. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think Jordan Peterson said, the only way out of chaos is to tell the truth. Yeah. And I love that. Mm -hmm. So align yourself with the truth. You know, people know who I am. Right. And the people I care about know who I am. Right. And, and oh, by the way, so do so do any of the women in my life in my past, you know. Um, None of whom have come out publicly and said that they've not experienced any of that thing. None in back. Again, this is a this is a game of optics. This is a game of optics. People are not coming out and backing you publicly. People are not allowing you to come on their platform to say your voice. You are now relegated to doing shows behind a paywall. Say now with Candice Owens. Do you know what I mean? This isn't. This doesn't lend credibility or validity to your side of the, the things unfortunately this is the world we're living in 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 a fair world you'd be able to fight your corner and say you didn't do something people will allow you and give you kind of due process right you'd kind of go through a court of law or something along those kind of lines present evidence someone come to you know a decision and whatever decision has been made people have to accept it and move on but we don't live in that world unfortunately and you have to move accordingly and i just think he just moved incredibly sloppy, especially for somebody that speaks about because you have to remember these people this whole you know california comedy crew click all they speak about especially joe where it started getting a bit shit they keep talking about flipping counterculture they love speaking about counterculture again and again about somebody doing something doing that something doing this cool learn the lessons from people that have done things badly learn the lessons from what they've done and kind of like keep those in the back of your head to be like okay cool if i get if i ever get accused of something words of the wise i'm not going to do x y and z that's what you should be doing. I, I, without going into detail, that 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 was sort of made clear to me too. I said I said to my lawyer and my publicist, I said I need to know that you believe me. Mm. I'm not interested in a hired gun. I want you to know. And then I showed them my sort of evidence, and and that was that was very important to me. Right. You know, I don't want I don't want to be somebody who hires someone who is defending me because i'm paying them because i'm on their team i'm not interested in that right I, I i i'm just not so but again sometimes your uh chaos comes in a form you have no defense for right yeah man i don't know i just think it's over you just have to accept your reality and just move on with other things in it i just think it's done it's a wrap for him in terms of a normal career in Hollywood, you just have to move on with it. That's just my opinion. I don't know what you guys think, but I just think all the stuff is pointless. Too much time has gone by, uh, too much water under the bridge, too many missteps have been made. People are never going to believe your side of the story anymore. You just have to accept that whatever career that you had in the past, however it was, however you viewed yourself, is just never to be replicated. It just is what it is. It's a shame, and especially if you're innocent, it's a real shame, but this is the world that we live in at the moment, isn't it? This is the world that we live in.